Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Hand Tool School Weekly Update. Welcome to our new members, Nick, Mindy, and Trey, who joined this Hello, week. YouTube you watchers. Every single week, what you're actually seeing is the opening to a weekly video that I do in the Hand Tool School. Each week, I highlight new projects, new conversations, just new stuff going on in the Hand Tool School community. That's, that's our community forum. And at the same time, I always throw in a tip, small demonstration, or in some instances like this week, I do a little project. So maybe not projects every single week, but there's certainly some sort of woodworking takeaway every single week. So I hear from a lot of people all the time and say, how come you don't post on YouTube anymore? Well, I still want to, I still have plans to, but there's only so many hours in the day. And because there's so many of you folks that are quarantined at home and maybe have some extra shop time, I wanted to take the weekly update from the Hand Tool School out from behind the paywall of the community and put it here on the Renaissance Woodworker YouTube channel and let you know that I am still posting videos, one, at least one, every single week. But you got to be a hand tool school member and my little plug if you will is if you have purchased anything in the hand tool school whether it be a ten dollar lesson or two hundred dollar semester or a thirty eight dollar monthly subscription you will have lifetime access to the community forum and continue to see these weekly videos and yes there is a price for admission but honestly it is the friendliest most helpful hand tool community that i've ever run across in the more than 10 years that I've been involved in woodworking online. So there's my little public service announcement slash plug for my school. So now I rejoin the project already in progress. So let's tackle one of those rites of passage projects. If you ever took wood shop in school, you probably built a paper towel holder. And that's what I'm gonna build today. Just you know, I need one in my shop. I've needed one for a while. I have some scrap lying around, and this can be an opportunity to just try out a couple of small techniques. Milling up some boards, cutting some dados, cutting a notch on the back, rounding down a square piece of stock into an octagon, some boring precision boring holes. You know, not a whole lot of groundbreaking woodworking going on here, but it's just a fun opportunity to get to the shop, take advantage of a rough time that this world is going through right now with this pandemic, and if nothing else, if you don't need a paper towel holder, you could put sandpaper on this, or you just have a shelf now that you can put some stuff on. But the real key I want you to take away from in this project is the whole idea of building without a plan. I'm not going to do any kind of model here. I'm not going to draw anything out. I'm just going to grab a board that I have and design the whole thing off of a board and a paper towel roll. So obviously it's great if you've got an example of something, you can see how it all goes together and it's really kind of easy to reverse engineer it from there. And this is why a lot of times I'll do SketchUp models. Even for something simple like this towel holder, it can just be nice to have a visual representation of something, take it apart and kind of see how the pieces will come together just to be able to get back to starting point of knowing how big of a board am I gonna need. But sometimes I don't always have that. So obviously, that clip that I just showed you, I filmed that after I built the whole thing. Now we're going back in time. I have not built this paper towel holder yet. And I wanna show you how I'm kinda of gonna design on the fly. The first thing that I need is a board. And really, I design from the board. Now, paper towel holder, right? It's functional, so the paper towel needs to actually fit into the board. So what I need is a board that is wider than the paper towel holder that can act as my side supports. And I've taken a hand plane and I've flattened both sides. I haven't really paid too much attention to them being perfectly parallel. Mostly just want to get to a grain surface that I can work with on a pencil um, and start laying some things out. I can do some further flattening later. Moreover, why would I want to flatten this whole board when, once I start cutting in individual pieces? It's going to be a lot easier to flatten those shorter pieces. So I've got a board that the only um, requirement is that it's wider than my paper towel. Now I'm using shop paper towels. These tend to be smaller rolls. If you're buying like big bounty paper towels or double roll things, you need to take that into account and make sure you've actually got the towel roll you're going to be using and use that to get a board that's going to be, I would say, at least an inch wider than the towel roll itself. So what I would have is a side piece and I have a hole in it that the, the dowel runs through. I grabbed some 
thicker stock for my scrap bin. Um, you could use uh, already made dowel stock from like the home center. This just happens to be some hickory that's uh, about, I don't know, one and a half inches square or so. So it fits through there. I'll be able to round that down into an octagon and use that. The diameter of this is not really important. What's important is that it's long enough that you've got plenty outside the paper towel to run through the sides of the holder. I'll set that aside for now. But what I want to do is lay out exactly how long each of these sides needs to be. So I know that I'm going to have two sides, I'm going to have a top, and I'm going to have a back piece. That back piece adds some rigidity, but it also gives me a point in which I can mount it to my wall. So already I know that the back piece is going to take up some of this width, and I'm going to want to position my paper towel in there, and I need to account for the width of that back piece. So first thing I'll do is take my combo square and just set it to the thickness. I could use a, a marking gauge for this too if you want, and I'm just going to run a pencil line down the board just to take up that thickness. And it's not going to run the entire length. I imagine, say, if, if the top, if it ends up being this long, I'll probably run it maybe halfway down. It give me a nice mounting point for the back piece, but it's not going to necessarily run all the way down. But it's important to recognize that I need to count for that thickness. The next thing I want to do is position the paper towel in there. And I can just drop it in and say, OK, there it fits. I can draw a line across there, and I'm good to go. But I do want to put some kind of decorative edge here. I'm going to do like an overlow profile here that essentially mimics the curve of the paper towel. So I use a washer. I like fender washers because they, this has a, a half inch offset. What I'll do is push the washer up against the paper towel roll. and just trace around it. What that does is it gives me, whoa, let's not drop it on the floor. It gives me the shape of the paper towel plus a half an inch or, or whatever this is. It gives me that offset so I can set the paper towel in there and have the front of the case kind of mimic it. So. Let's run this curve straight back. So I've got kind of a pleasing curve. I realize this is a little hard to see with pencil here. And then I'm going to do a 90 degree step out to the edge. So what I'm left with is this oval pattern here that resembles or mimics the shape of the paper towel roll. And I think that's kind of pleasing and nice. And then I'll just come up, let's see, what have I got down here? I've got an inch offset, so I'll just mimic that, do another inch there. And that is the profile of my paper towel holder side. Now I need to account for a little bit of extra to actually be uh, uh, dadoed into the top to attach to the top. So I'm just going to come up, I don't know, another half inch or so and just lay that across. So this is now uh, six and six and about a half. So if I come up from that line seven inches. and square that across, I now have the dimensions for my two sides. Next thing you need to figure out is how long the overall assembly is going to be. Ideally, the back piece and the top piece should be about the same length. The top piece will be a little bit longer because I want it to overhang a little. But if I drop this in, I've got enough room left on this board that I can get two pieces out of it that will make for my, um, my back and my top. So what I'm going to do is just split the difference. I'm just going to split that right down the middle, knowing that each one of these pieces is going to be way longer than I need. So I've got 31 and a half inches of board left here. So let's cut down to 
15 and 3 quarters, half of that. Square line across. So now I've taken my board here, I've laid out the shape of the side, I've, I've then figured out the, the, the dimensions of it, duplicated it here, come back and just split the last part in half, knowing that each one of these pieces is going to be a bit long, but I can create the, the back panel for this and the top panel for here, knowing that I've got enough left over there. Here's one side. Second side, and then chop this in half. And while I've got the saw out, I'm going to go ahead and strike a line three inches from one edge. This is going to be my, my back piece. As I said, I don't really need this to be full width. I'm just going to go ahead and rip, rip off this side. These side panels, I need to joint one edge and get one edge square. Those are my reference surface. Here's the top and here's the back. The rest of this is going to be cut into a curve. So let me start by jointing the back edge. When I set my two sides together, line up the back jointed edge and the top edge that's been shot, I've got this board, it's a little bit longer, I will just trace it and I can saw this off and get them to exact size. So I've got two straight cuts here that mark like the fillet on the other side of the oval. I'll go ahead and make those two straight cuts with a back saw. Now I can shape this curve with my turning saw. Actually, I think I'll use a coping saw here. Okay. I like to flip it over in the side that I haven't marked and just kind of eyeball it and see, you know, we're a little, little fat on the curve out here. So I'm just going to mark that up a little. And let's come back and shape this with a rasp to get the curve we like. Certainly when you can make a continuous saw cut like I did there, it's a lot easier to clean up the surface because you don't have a bunch of intersecting cuts. The closer I can get to my line, the faster this is going to go. And already that's a lot better. So I'm going to kind of draw file that's moving across the board, but at the same time I'm drawing across the board, I'm moving along the length. So I'm essentially skewing it and fairing that curve. Gets me a nice curve. I'll step down to my 15 grain modeler's rasp. And this gets it pretty much finish ready. I mean, really close to finish ready. A little bit of sandpaper or just coming back with a mill file. We'll get this finish ready. I have a cabinet maker's file, so I will use that. Again, same technique. Drawing but also moving down the length of the piece. 
and I'm just going to use the file to break the sharp edges. And that's got the curve the way I want it, and you can see I've got a great finish ready surface there. These inside fillets, I'm just going to come back and trim them with a chisel. Essentially, this piece is done, and I need to use it to transfer the shape onto the mate. So again, line up my reference surfaces, the top and the back here. There's my final shape. I just repeat that whole process, sawing it out, rasping, filing, down to shape. I need to now focus on the top here. I'm going to joint the back edge, make that a reference edge. break that top corner a little. So I need to figure out where I'm going to lay in the joinery. And that is determined by the towel roll itself. So I want a little bit of play from side to side on the, the roll, but not maybe a half an inch on either side of it. My top is going to be too long. This overhang just kind of naturally happened, but I kind of like it. It kind of works. It's kind of a weird, yeah, it's about one and a half inches as an overhang, a little heavy of that. So if we do one and a half inches there, I'm just going to make a little mark right there. We'll set that right there. I'll make a little mark. And then I'll come over from this last mark one and a half inches to match the overhang. One and a half. So now I need to cut off this board and I need to cut dados there and there and just a last Double check here. That should be one and a half inches to that line, which means this line is the outside of the dado. So I'm going to put X's on the inside of that to let me know where my dado goes. Let me show you that again on the other side, because this is particularly important. A lot of people will lay things out and then they forget where the dado goes. Does it go, you know, on this side of the line or that side of the line? And suddenly your stuff is not where it's supposed to be. So one and a half inches from the end of the board is to this line. So this line marks the outside of the dado. So I'm going to come in and put X's on the inside of that line to tell me where that dado goes. And I'll lay in the other line off of the piece itself, but what I want to do is knife in that line rather than just using a pencil there. A knife is going to be better for joinery. Now I can press the square firmly up against the reference edge, drop my knife into my line, lighter pull the first time, a little bit heavier the second time, and the third time, the heaviest, and I'm standing this spear point tool up really tall and it gives me an even deeper line there. Now 
I can drop that right in place, hold it up to that line, and now just lightly score the other side. With that scored, I can now come back with a square, get a little bit better registration, and really make sure that that line is square to the front here. There's my dado. I repeat that on the other side. And I'll come in and put some first class saw cuts or knife walls, whatever you want to call them in there, and saw these out. I'm going to set the depth of the dados to about half the thickness here, so I'm just going to eyeball that. I'm ready to saw out some dados. Nice prominent knife wall there. Gives me lots for the saw to run up against. I still establish my cut by starting on one end and working the other kind of at an angle. Just because trying to engage so many teeth, like the, all the teeth here, that's, that's a lot of opportunity to screw up. And I hold the back saw and just see if it's rocking at all. To my lines on both ends, feels like I'm pretty pretty much to depth there. So again, start on this side, work down to my line, and then slowly just kind of lift the handle up, extending the saw out, extending the kerf out along that knife roll until I hit the other side. And now I'll raise the handle and work down to my depth line. What I like to do is kind of lift the handle up and work with just the toe of the saw. And I can use that to kind of hollow out the middle. That dado is ready to go. And you know what, just for fun. Let's put a Morton cut in the middle. Repeat that on the other dado. Tap out that last little bit. And the good news is, is the fence of my pairing hook now is low enough. It's actually a perfect height to support the outfeed side of this cut. Plus, I'm not taking, I'm just doing half a turn each one. Really light cuts. Heavy cuts will have a tendency to want to spelch the opposite side. Maybe one or two more to get to final depth. I haven't set my depth stop because I'm working on the first dado here. But once I get this to final depth, which I believe I'm there, I will set my depth stop. Now I can come over here, back the blade out a bit. If this 
stars have aligned, we should have a good friction fit. Excellent. Over here, you know, we're a little bit looser over here, but it's still, it's a good fit. It goes in and then it doesn't really want to easily slide backwards and forwards, but it's almost as if it's a little bit loose right at the top. As you can see, it wants to wiggle a little. Still, I'm not terribly worried about that. Once I put glue in there, it'll swell up and it'll come up really tight. So I think I can be happy with that. <clears throat> so what I want to do now is I have to size the back. First joint, the top edge. And I'm just gonna break the corners a little bit. And I've gone ahead and shot one end of this. So lining that up over here, I can come over here and now mark the finish width and just saw that to finish with, shoot that end, and I'm ready to lay it in place. And to do that, I'm just gonna cut a notch on the back. And what I'm gonna do is just slip the piece in and mark the top leading edge. With my notch laid in here, going to saw this out. Now this is pretty long. I mean, it's three inches deep. So you may not have a back saw capable of making this cut. So you might have to actually use a, a frame saw, a fret saw, or something like that. could make a series of Morton cuts along the length and then just come in and chop it out with a chisel, but still I think using fret saw or something along that line, some sort of frame saw, turning saw even, would make this a lot faster. Get this edge relatively flat and then you can come back with a chisel and pair it flat. But if you can saw it out like I just did, you can get joinery that's going to fit right off the saw. And that is always gonna end up looking a heck of a lot better. Bring this back to bear. And everything slips neatly into the notch. And I've got this great long grain to long grain junction right here. So I'll be able to glue that. That'll hold everything nice and firm, give it lots of kind of anti-racking. And since the whole thing will be mounted via this back piece, it'll be important that this is securely attached to the top piece. I mean, let's face it, it's not like there's a lot of load or stress on this, just a paper towel. So all that's left from here is to bore the holes for the actual paper towel rod. So what I'm gonna do is bore the hole for the rod at one inch. Cause it doesn't have to be super snug. I mean, you want it to be loose that it will roll a little bit, but you don't want it to flop all over the place. <clears throat> I'm just gonna double stick tape these two together so that my reference faces are again lined up. we go and the roll I want to kind of line up with this front edge as much as possible and I need to make sure that I've got clearance behind it for this gap so that looks about right I just need to kind of somewhat accurately position this so I'm just using a ruler across the top from the outer edge to approximately the center is two inches. So I'm going to make a line right there and measure in from that line two inches. And if I put that hole right there, just sighting down through the tube, positioning in the center, that works. 
Again, close enough for government work in this case. And because I've got them, you know, uh, taped together, I just need to locate the hole one time. And I'm going to bore out a one inch hole. You can use an auger bit here. I'm going to use a center bit. But, of course, not everybody has center bits, so auger bit is just fine. I just find center bits in thinner stock like this work pretty well. And they leave nice clean holes. If you really lighten up the pressure here and let the spurs do their work and even go back and forth with the spurs scoring any areas that are sticking, you should get a nice clean hole. There we go. Nice clean exit hole. And I'm ready for glue up. Well, almost. I want to do smoothing plane passes over all the surface, clean off all my marks and everything, and then I'll glue everything up. Okay, by now you guys probably know how I feel about rehearsing glue ups. And I have rehearsed this glue up. I know exactly the order everything needs to go in, where I want to put clamps, etc. It makes everything go much smoother. It's a nice long joint back here. I do have a dado here, but the wood grain is all moving in concert, so I can glue up the whole thing. Let that cook, and while it does, I can shape an octagonal towel rod. So the first thing I did was cross cut this piece of hickory down to two inches longer than uh, the total width. So it's going to be an inch over overhanging from each side. Now this is a rectangle, it's not a square, so I do want to quickly rough it down to a square-ish shape. And that is going to be about a one inch square. It's actually closer to about 15 16 when I get it fully rounded down. And you'll see what I'm doing. I've got actually a circle drawn on the end. I just used one of these circle templates to put a 15 16 circle down, uh, kind of squish down to this side of the hickory because this side is actually flat. This uh, top side had some undulations in it where it was riven out. And I'm just kind of roughing the blank down to that line. You can see now I've got a square. And to help with this, what I did was actually run a pencil line all the way along the face that matches up with that 15 16 And I come in and I cut a chamfer down to that line. A little bit of switch back in grain there is making this all the more fun. And once I cut that chamfer on both sides, I end up with this hump in the middle. And I just remove that hump. I can kind of sight down looking at my chamfers till they disappear. And that gets me pretty close to in my ballpark. Now I'll flip it around and repeat this process on the other side.
Now I've got a blank that's roughly square-ish, maybe a couple undulations I could clean up here and there, but really from here, I'm going to start knocking off corners and turning it into an octagon. It's really kind of up to you how far you want to go here. You know, if I wanted a perfectly round cylinder, I'd go to the hardware store and buy a dowel. I kind of like the somewhat rustic faceted look of this, and I think I'm going to leave it at that. This is, you know, uniform for the most part. The sharp edges are rounded over, and I'm happy with it. Now I need something to secure the rod in place, and I'm going to use a dowel in one end, and this wrought nail, actually, I got this in Columbia Williamsburg like 10 years ago. I'm going to use that on the other end. This will be the removable side to allow me to replace the paper towel. And this is a cherry um, quarter inch dowel that I had uh, riven out a while ago. I don't know about you guys, but I keep a little Tupperware thing like this that I'm always throwing little riven pieces of scrap into or little off cut pieces of scrap that I can ride and pound through a dowel plate to make dowels. So I've marked my rod about a half inch in from each end. I'm gonna drill a hole that's just undersized for that dowel. It's the next size down in my drill index, so it's a 64th smaller. I'll just slightly counterbore that hole. All right, this dowel just perfectly fits in there. Nice hammer tight friction fit. Drive it through until it sticks out. I don't know, that's a bit far. Maybe a quarter inch or so out the other side. And then I'll just trim this off to match. Now on the other end where the nail goes, I've drilled the same hole that I did on the other side all the way through. And this allows the tip of the nail to slide almost all the way through to the other side. And what I'm going to do is jump up two bit sizes and bore through from one side, just kind of creating a stepped or, or tapered hole. And the hole is actually big enough now that I can come in with a rat tail file. And actually shape the taper. So it's not just a step, a hard step. It's an actual tapered hole. Now that slides in, wedges up nicely. I think I want to go a little bit more so I can get the, the nail to penetrate even further through. But you get the idea. And moment of truth, here's our towel rack out of the, the clamps. <clears throat> Going to feed it through, connect it on that side, run the nail in, wedge it in place. And now we have the difficult question of overhand roll or underhand roll. That I'll let you sort out in your own shop. And that's all there is to this project. Again, there's no groundbreaking woodworking going on here, but just designing a piece kind of from the materials you have on hand to fit a need based upon a function. In this case, the function is to hold this paper towel roll. We didn't need plans, we didn't need anything but a board and some measurements that we took from the paper towel roll ourselves. Now to mount this, I gotta take the towel out again. 
This back panel here, um, you can put a couple of screw holes through here, screw this directly into the wall. I've got plywood up in my shop, so I can screw it up anywhere. Honestly, there's not a lot of load on this, so it's not like you necessarily need to find studs, maybe use wall anchors. I've got this handy shelf up here that I can store some stuff on, so there could be some weight on this. But that I'll leave up to you. Maybe you don't want screws through here. Maybe you want to use some sort of faster alligator hook or keyhole hanger or something on the back. Now, there's a lot you could do with this product. Project. And honestly, I don't know that I'm done with this yet. In fact, I'm not going to put finish on it just yet because I may want to play around with a little bit more. A project like this, while it's kind of a rite of passage for woodworkers, can also be a showpiece to try out some new techniques. Maybe, I don't know, put some marquetry on the top because who doesn't want a marquetry artwork paper towel holder. Maybe run a little gallery edge and do some kind of Chinese fretwork or something around the top. There's all kinds of cool little advanced techniques that you could do on this very small scale project that would be very unintimidating and a great opportunity to proving ground, if you will, to try it out. So if you make one of these and you embellish it with your own style and your own technique or you try out a new technique, I want to see it. Definitely share that with me. And thanks for watching, everybody.